Several days ago, Kia hosted their EV3 Tech Day in Korea. And because of this, we learned a lot about the new technologies being utilized in the EV3. And we might be getting a glimpse of what should be coming to Ionic 5, Ionic 6, and EV6 in the near future. So if you want to find out everything that we learned, then stay tuned. Hey everyone, if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name's Corbin, I cover all things Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis EV related. So this tech day that Kia hosted several days ago was basically their engineering team sitting down and explaining these new technologies to members of the Korean press. And I'm going to be going off of the Korean car blogs information that they shared. There's a link in the description to their article if you're interested. They're a great website. Now, the first thing we're going to be talking about here is iPedal 3.0. If you're not familiar with what iPedal is, it's one pedal driving. By pressing the left paddle located behind the steering wheel until the screen displays the word iPedal, you will then be taken into one pedal driving. And what that means is basically you're only using the accelerator pedal to accelerate as well as come to a complete stop. So what Kia revealed is that this new version of iPedal is going to work in other regeneration modes which I don't really know based on this information how that's going to work. But what it sounds like this is going to do is as you take your foot off the accelerator pedal, if it does sense something in front of you, either a stop sign, a stop light, or another vehicle, it will stop for you. So that eliminates the need for you to put your foot on the brake pedal. So this is interesting. I wish we got more information about exactly how that's going to work. But what this could ultimately lead to is more efficient driving because iPedal is by no means the most efficient form of driving one of these cars. It would be much better for you to do coasting when you are just cruising along and then regenerative braking when you do need to stop. And with iPedal, you just can't really balance that. You're always putting some power via the accelerator pedal into the motors instead of coasting and having your foot completely off the accelerator pedal. Something you're going to be really excited to hear is the fact that with iPedal 3, it is going to remember your settings. So if you have the car on iPedal, it's not going to default to level 3 and then you have to flip it back into iPedal every time you get in the car. That's really annoying. I'm always in iPedal. Every time I get in the car, I just subconsciously tell myself to click the left paddle multiple times until iPedal is active. Another nicety here is going to be the fact that iPedal will now work in reverse and not only in forward driving. So that's something that catches a lot of people off guard is that when they are in reverse and they take their foot off the accelerator pedal, they think that it's going to stop, but it doesn't. You have to use that brake pedal. I hope this feature could potentially make its way back to the older Ionic 5, Ionic 6, EV6, EV9, all of the existing EVs. So all of this iPedal 3.0 kind of ties into this next point here, which is Smart Regenerative System 3.0. So Korean Car Blog says it integrates autonomous driving technology to automatically adjust the deceleration level based on sensor data and navigation information. And that's kind of what I was just talking about with how you could be in level zero regen and then have iPedal automatically engage if there is a stop sign, stop light, or another car in front of you. Their next bullet point says provides a more economical driving experience by reducing the need to manually operate the brake pedal. It's kind of what we just talked about. Uses a variety of navigation based data to adjust to various driving conditions such as speed cameras, curves, and roundabouts. So it sounds like Hyundai and Kia are definitely moving towards a more autonomous future with these vehicles and in terms of what they are capable of doing. Now this next one is in relation to the HVAC or heating ventilation air conditioning system in the car. So they're saying this is a new thin HVAC system. It's the world's first ultra compact heating ventilation and air conditioning system that maximizes cabin space. It reduces the HVAC system size by 33% creating more legroom for passengers. That's always great. The more they can shrink these components, like they said, the more space we get on the interior of the car because the battery pack is down low, the motors are pushed to the front and the rear, so you can really have massive cabins with these cars. But when you look under the hood, there's still a lot of stuff crammed in there, so if they can make those smaller, why not? They also said that it increases airflow while reducing noise and power consumption. So. Right now, I have my Ionic 5 in level one, and there's a bit of noise coming from it. I don't know if you can pick it up on the microphone. I'll be quiet for a second.
For shooting videos, it can be a little annoying sometimes. Sometimes I have to turn the AC off completely, but on hot days, being in this fishbowl, it really does suck. So I do like to leave it on at least the lowest level, just so I'm not sweating and dying in here. But obviously, less energy being dedicated to the HVAC system means it can be used for propulsion and overall range of the vehicle. They don't really specify how much more range you would be getting because of this system. So bullet point number four, next generation thermal management system. It enhances heating performance and efficiency by utilizing both external air and drivetrain heat sources simultaneously. So I'm not entirely sure what that means. I guess maybe with the older EVs from Hyundai Kia, the battery management system was powering its heating system separately than the cabin HVAC. I'm not 100% sure, but it sounds like maybe they're gonna be running them together at the same time to reduce power draw. They say it reduces the number of components by 44% and weight by 4.5%, leading to better efficiency and performance. So again, they're always striving for more efficiency and performance, which is always a good thing. Bullet point number five, new electric power control simplifies the power control configuration from a four stage to a three stage system. I have no idea what that means. I'll be completely honest with you. Um, just no clue whatsoever. The next part of this bullet point, it allows the high voltage battery to be used in a power on state for functions like heating, cooling in interior vehicle to load without needing the vehicle to be in ready state. This to me sounds really good. And let me tell you why. Currently with these existing cars, if you want to use the HVAC or vehicle to load on the interior, you have to have the car powered on. And that means that the contactor between the high voltage battery pack and the rest of the system needs to engage to provide power. And that only happens when the vehicle is in ready mode. If you just double tap the EV start stop button without having your foot on the brake, it doesn't engage that high voltage contactor. Like if you try to run the HVAC system in that state, it's using the 12 volt traditional battery to power the system. And we all know that with these cars, the 12 volt battery is kind of a point of contention. You don't really wanna use it all that much if you don't have to. There's been all sorts of issues with them dying, dying prematurely, just all around not a good situation. But if this means that they can power all these systems from the high voltage battery pack um, directly, that is a good thing. It means you're gonna have far fewer 12 volt battery issues. Hopefully with the EV3, they can finally have the kinks worked out of the low voltage system because even with the new EV9, there's still all sorts of 12 volt battery issues. They've already issued multiple software updates to the EV9 to try and nip some things in the bud. But as far as I know, the EV9 still has its problems. Moving on to the next section, they say that the EV3 is going to have the driving range guide that we already see in the EV9, basically where it has your estimated range on the driver display. Above it will be a high point and below it will be a low point. So the maximum distance the car thinks you could go if you're driving most efficiently and the shortest distance the car thinks you could go if you're driving the least efficiently. And I experienced that when I reviewed the EV9. I really liked it. I think for seasoned EV drivers, they're not gonna really care too much, but for new EV drivers, I think that will really help give them a better understanding of worst case scenario versus best case scenario, how weather and terrain and all that stuff can affect your overall range with the car. The EV3 has a drag coefficient of 0.27, so that's good to see. If you can make a car efficient just on its shape, that is the easiest way to do it. Of course, we already know the EV3 is going to be available with the new 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, which they say will give it a driving range of 501 kilometers or a little over 300 miles, which is definitely nothing to scoff at. That is a very good range figure in my opinion. The battery pack has greater energy density and faster charging times versus the Kia Nero EV, which is the car that it's more or less replacing in the grand scheme of things. They also talk about enhanced ride and handling. There is a frequency sensitive valve to reduce road vibrations and a hydro G bushing for superior shock absorption. Uses structural reinforcements for improved handling and stability. So we kind of already heard about this with some other Hyundai Kia EVs. The new refreshed Ionic 5 is supposedly gonna have it, and I'm assuming the refreshed EV6 as well. And then the last thing here that they talked about was noise, vibration, and harshness, or NVH as they like to call it in the industry. 
and they're talking about minimizing road noise and wind noise transmission in the cabin through various enhancements like frame stay brackets, dynamic dampers, and reinforced sound insulation materials. So also all good things to hear. So this was really cool. I really like that Kia spent the time to talk about all these technologies and really show what they're doing to improve their products. I hope Hyundai does the same thing with their new products as well. The more they can share with the general public, the more I think it shows how much good faith they're putting into these endeavors and these products to really get this technology just matured and to a point where it makes these cars much more logical for other people who might not be interested in them at this point in time. So these are some pretty exciting developments in my opinion. I'm very interested in iPedal 3.0 and these new modes for regenerative braking. So anyway guys, check out the link down below to the Korean Car Blog's website. Check out my store at ionicguy.com for accessories for your Hyundai, Kia, or Genesis EV. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and as always I will see you guys in the next one. Take care everybody. Bye.